I mean, a movie, talking about a movie within a movie, it's just confusing. You're just not ready for prime time, kid. Well, you know, a phoenix has to burn before it can rise from the ashes, so. I have no idea what that means. Me neither. My dad would just always say it. <laughs> I never met my father. Cool. Uh, this is my stop. Welcome to this week's episode of Two Guys and Some Horror. I am so excited to be doing this uh, episode because we are talking about a movie that is fairly recent. Um, it's another anthology, which I know uh, they're very hard to come by. Good, good anthologies. But we're doing Scare Package from 2019. And as always, uh, best co-host in the podcasting game, Clark, is here with me. Um, yeah, I mean, I watched this one by myself. I'm not sure... Clark, yeah. how, how did you watch it, bud? Yeah. Oh man, I watched it with my best friend. Wait, Joe. I wasn't. I wasn't Bob there. Briggs. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, 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 Joe Bob Briggs. I watched it on uh, Last Drive-In with Joe Bob Briggs on Shutter, Curtis. And you say uh, you watched it alone? I did. I watched it alone. Um, I was uh, taking a relaxing break <clears throat> while my son was napping, and I threw my headphones mm -hmm. on, and I was sitting there, and I was watching it, and I loved it. And then I thought, you know what? I should watch it again. So I watched the last drive-in version of it as well. Oh, that is a good choice. I actually did the same thing. I watched the uh, the individual film on Prime. Or it was, it was Shudder, sorry. Watched it on Shudder. I didn't realize they had like, last drive-in until you pointed it out. Uh, then I saw it, like, saw it the second time. and Still loved it. Great well, movie. I'm, I'm glad I was able to enlighten you because I'm sure the last drive-in version was a little bit more campy and fun at times right it was very hokey uh very pokey you know you get joe bob he gets in there and he does his joe bob thing where he uh he joe bobs it <clears throat> he joe bobs it up well he he's a very southern man and he wears a bolo and a shirt that you wear with a bolo that looks like an upside down guitar so uh, you tell me man i think i think that's the second time he's worn that shirt too and I, I found that yeah. shirt the first time I watched it. Um, very amusing. I love it. Um, I, I love his hokiness. I love the the whole, I don't know, the whole last drive-in feel. I think it's a lot of fun. And I know um, whenever we watched Heathers together a while back or whatnot, yeah. it, it definitely has its shining moments. Certain movies, I think, are a lot more fun to watch. Some are just kind of meh. Um, but I think the biggest thing is the segments. You know, you get a lot of information from Joe Bob, too. Um, yeah. Sometimes like the information is uh, kind of boring, but the delivery is always good. It's always the same. <laughs> no, I, I really like his little review seg segment with this one. Uh, he, always, he always ends it with, Joe Bob says, check it out. I love um, it, yeah. But this one, he only went between two and four stars. I think he hit three once. Uh, but I, I have to say, yeah, I like his, he adds foo to everything. That's, like, what was it? Yeah. Uh, Slime foo. Pillow fight foo. Mm -hmm. So basically yeah. the foos, for the way I get it at least, and I mean, maybe this is obvious to others, but the foos are kills. Um, so like anytime someone dies, whatever the method of death that was given, that's the foo. So slime foo or, you know, crotch foo. What was it for the woods one? Uh, one time in the woods, basically. Um, but there's like crotch foo axe to the face foo or something like that it was great um and i really love how he broke down each one for each segment because yeah. this is an anthology like we had said before it's a comedy horror anthology uh produced by shutter um and yeah i mean i had i had a blast i'm pretty sure you had a blast too we've been talking about this now for a couple days <laughs> well no there's there's plenty of quotable lines which we'll get to yeah i didn't you know sadly i didn't write a lot of quotes down um because I just kept laughing the whole time and, and I just had more fun watching it. But yeah, there, there really are a lot of quotes. So I hope you got some good ones written down. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Uh, yeah. Which, well, let's first off, let's kind of talk about, I wanted to ask you this and I know I asked you before, but uh, I didn't tell you mine, but I want to hear yours okay. again. Which segment was your favorite? Uh, all the segments. So my favorite segment uh, was mm -hmm. one time in the woods. Okay. Um, and, and I think the biggest reason why I like it is just because of the comedy throughout was perfect. 
And this is the first segment. This is like after the cold open, we go into the frame. Um, and we kind of explain that like in this movie, there is a cold open where we meet a character who introduces the character who all of these segments will be kind of based around. Yep. And then we have our first segment, which is your favorite, yes. um, one time in the woods. Why is this one your favorite? Yeah. So I think the biggest reason, um, it's so memorable, the comedy inside of it. Uh, the yeah. slime, the slime goo creature who comes in, help me, help me. You know, I think the, even, even before he enters the scene, you've got two couples who are out in the woods, um, for like a weekend getaway, a romantic kind of getaway. And you get, it's just, um, what's the best way to describe it? The, the couples are kind of raunchy, right? Like one couple is like, dude, oh. fucking... <laughs> she, so he's like walking up to you. You guys talking about these fucking? Girls are having like a private, like girl conversation. And then the, one of their husbands walks up and he's like, Hey, so you guys talking about fucking? And she's like, yep. Yeah. And he's like, all right. <laughs> And then later, you know, you find out that her man had handcuffs with him. And then the girl leans in again. She's Silver like, handcuffs. Ooh, he's kinky. <laughs> and then he puts the mask on. Oh, he's really kinky. And then that's when I think, you know, more, I, I just like. Well, that's, that's the comedy there, right? Yeah, the latter. But the, it just keeps elevating. Each time a new character gets introduced, the comedy just goes through the roof. Like it just keeps. It's just spiking. random. Yeah. Well, there's, there's, you have a joke, you have a punchline that leads into another joke that leads into another joke and then a punchline. And then it just kind of moves off of like this, there's this bizarre, like super friendly murdery aspect of comedy going on. This guy's like melting into a puddle and he's like talking to everyone. And he's like, can you put your goop back, my goop back inside me? And then he bites the girl and she starts turning into a monster and it's just, like consistent jokes like that that are just gory yeah. and random like he throws a rock at her head and just like there's a visual oh explosion God. that head explosion was amazing when the girl gets hit with the bits in the face i i think she was actually stunned at how explosive that head was and it was probably a good couple of feet away from her but i, I mean her yeah. her look of shock was amazing but the bite Dude. so the quote from the bite makes me laugh so much because He's like, oh, I, yeah, think, yeah, yeah. I think I can control it. And then she goes to help him. He bites her and he goes, well, I can't control it. I guess we know now. <laughs> like he's no, just... see, he didn't say, well, so like, oh man, you ruined it. No, you didn't. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, like he just bites her and, and he's like, I, I thought we could control, control it, it, but we can't. But we know, we know that now. My delivery said, may not have been so great. Right? But... This is my side and that's yours. Maybe, maybe we just don't talk. Fine by me. I, I can not talk, talk all, all day long. Because he's oh. been talking so much throughout this entire segment, this melting skull. He's basically been narrating everything throughout that segment the entire time, which was <laughs> just the delivery is so dry from him, which is great. Like he's not laughing, he's not smiling. You can tell yeah. he's just delivering, and it was it was well done, very well done. Oh, hilarious! Yeah, this is there's there's a guy who come, run, runs up to him. He's like looking for this guy who might turn into a monster. Hey, I'm I'm hunting a man. Have you seen him? He's got like a weapon. He's all ready. Uh, man, just the he's, most random characters show up. He's beating me with my leg. <laughs> so I'm with no introduction. Like oh, just a man. guy goes, "Hey guys, what's up?" And he has like an act. He get gets axed in the dick by another character. Yep. And then just... the, and then that character ends up running and falling, and his head goes into the axe, which is in the dude's dick. So he ends up getting axed in the face from the yeah, guys. Yeah, and make it look kind of, oh, kind of yeah. raunchy. Oh, yeah. Dude. He's ripping my legs off. Ah, he's ripping my other leg off. Now I have a butterfly tattoo on that on my ankle that I'll never get to enjoy. Yeah, like, <laughs> the, oh, man. Okay, so this, yeah, this genuinely is my favorite segment out of the whole series. It, oh, it's just nonstop, like, laughing and I don't yeah. know. The, for some I reason, it really it. made me think of there's nothing out there as well. Like the goo in the in the forest kind of made me think of that, like that old old film that we watched actually uh, earlier in the season with Nick. It was a um, lot of fun. It, it was. It was really good. It was a lot of fun. Uh, so my favorite segment, though. Okay. I'm, and I'm sorry. No, it's no. The Night He Came Back Again, Part 4, okay. The Final Kill. And Clark, Which... why, why is it your favorite segment? I, I, for many of the same reasons, like this is like tied with uh, 
one time in the woods. So like in terms of like how how much I just enjoyed it. I feel like this one's a bit shorter, but it's it's a little bit like it's it's the same comedy. It's the same kind of. I just feel what's her face. Um, the main actress did such a great job of being a final girl. Yeah, I think her name in the episode is Daisy in the segment. Um, yeah. And yeah, I, I mean, I think my the thoughts I have on this one specifically, the reason why it was so good to me was it mocks like every Halloween film. And yes, every film it is where Halloween. He comes back, but specifically <clears throat> Halloween, in my opinion. I, I think it was amazing. It was great. And the way they kind of like got him to come in at the very start, everyone's hiding in closets. You see them hiding in closets. And it's just final girls making out with uh <clears throat> with boyfriend and he comes in it's like haha we trapped you by making out and being indecent and the entire time like they they tase him they tie him up and they're like all right now i'm gonna stab him so she stabs him a couple times leaves the knife in and her boyfriend's like let me check to see if he's dead so we can fuck and she's like no don't do that so of course you know mike myers oogie boogie man because he's got an oogie boogie mask pulls a knife out of his chest and like just murders <clears throat> her boyfriend like right in front of her and then like the other character who likes the girls in the background he's, he's just like yes like so excited that the boyfriend got murdered yeah because if, especially when you listen to her kind of monologue or whatever about uh all the boyfriends she's had before and how each one dies and she never gets a chance to actually go all the way with them. And then, so like, yeah. there's always this next man up kind of situation. He saved himself for her. Yeah, I saved myself for you. You know how many girls I could have slept with? <laughs> he, was so, he was so mad she wouldn't fuck him. <laughs> he was so mad. She was, and, yeah. then, uh... and then she got mad because she realized the only reason why he was even with her was to sleep with her. Dude. Oh, man. Okay, so then they electrocute him. They put like the the clamps on his nipples they they try and they she's like what are you doing this isn't a porno put them on his neck so <laughs> all that whole shit and then one of the characters like pulls out like a stethoscope after they kill him with the electrocution and his girlfriend's like no please don't and he's like it's, it's okay. okay babe i'm pre-med Pre yeah it's, what a bad joke though <laughs> <laughs> what a bad joke <laughs> <laughs> it's like getting all cocky just by being pre-med and so like he puts the stethoscope and like dude the, the kills in this one are just classic they're amazing i would like, say they're classic some... until until his body is blown up and then it's just outlandish and i think it takes it to the next level right that's yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. well like they definitely at the same level of like someone getting electrocuted by the, the killer's body, like through a stethoscope. That's something that would definitely happen in a Friday the 13th movie. Yes. They yes. would shove that in there. Tommy, Stupid kills like that. <laughs> Tommy Jarvis sitting on top of the, you know, what is it? Tommy six? Jarbles revives him. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That, that was, but it's that the is reverse, the epitome right? of bad in terms of like bringing, well, that was, that was still a successful film, but one of the worst ones arguably i mean freddy goes to new york still exists but freddy this film is great it, it definitely it definitely hits that slasher vibe like they throw the put the fireworks down his throat light him up and his body explodes and then the girl picks up his legs and they wrap around her and he like the other guy like hangs up hangs her with the intestines attached to the leg for that reasons was why insane so yeah. he's the one that kills her like and he's like wanting to have sex with the girl, but she's like not into him, and she's kind of like, "I oh, whatever, I'll kiss you." And then he finally dies because she's into the killer. And oh man, just what a great twist! And then puts him in the wood chipper, and that's when you get the Michael Myers, "I'm your brother" bullshit. Which is funny because <laughs> she was into him, like even more funny now. Like oh yeah, incest. So Stephen King wrote this one. I'm just kidding. Oh, uh, oh, so good. Yeah. Well, so I think that segment, yeah, definitely ties with uh, Out in the Woods for the best segment. I, I think I think you're right. I think my next favorite, the segment that I like probably next best, is Mister. Okay. One of the reasons why I like that one so much, though, is because the writer and the director, um, 
they're both they actually star in this one um so noah segan is actually our male who's at the bar talking with the bartender uh and then goes to take a leak and then ends up finding the poster for the mr group right and yeah. ends up going to hang out at this it's like a it's like an aa meeting but for men who want to get their balls back and yeah. that's the whole goal of this group is to it's to... a simp meeting it's a meeting for simps <laughs> it's to gain um, their manhood if back. that if that word offends you i don't care but when i mean simps it's for cucks it's for people who feel like they've lost their their ability to to be a their own individual and they have no balls or confidence yeah and it's very much so geared you know <clears throat> directly towards men um and and men with specifically who are married and whose whose wives uh, have t taken their manhood away from them. It's for men who want to learn how to be assholes in public. They just don't know how. They want to they want to be taught. Yeah. So the writer uh, Frank Garcia is the guy leading the talk in the very beginning of this segment, right? And he's the first quote you hear him even saying is, "Yeah, it takes a whole take side part. Who cares? And, you know, okay. like kind of like a you big macho it. man kind of a thing. Like that, shit. deal with it, kind of no. a thing." And I'm just, yeah, you know exactly what you're getting into uh, when you go into this meeting. And then they do like the whole roundabout um, that Dude. '70s show going around the table where all each the person... interviews are great. <laughs> yeah, they were all great, and it's like, yeah, yeah, I want you to shave your pubes, but I don't have to. What the... I mean, it, it, these are actual things that I'm sure married men deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Every single thing that they <laughs> said, someone out there in this world is dealing with that situation. And they're like, yeah, <laughs> I want you to shave your pu pubes, and I don't want to have to shave mine. What's so wrong with yeah. that? Like, And uh... then there's a... <clears throat> the kid's like, now they're making me actually count the seconds I give pe give hugs at work. <laughs> it's like, What? That, so um, stranger danger no don't don't do that no don't do that friends um <laughs> that guy looks like a doogie hauser character was he the one who got killed by the chocolate bar no he's the one that ran away like a little bit oh that's right he wolfs out looks he, he probably whines. looked the best yeah. I think, makeup wise but then he ends up being the biggest bitch of the werewolf they all look funny man they all look <laughs> funny like this, this oh, entire man. time at the meeting though to finish off the meeting the, the entire time at the meeting they're they're dropping and i text you this they're dropping hint after hint about being lycanthrope and yeah i was like listen clark if this segment because i hadn't watched you watched it already i hadn't watched it to shag if well, this segment doesn't turn out to be werewolves i quit i'm not doing this movie <laughs> yeah yeah no 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 but even at the start like they made it they made like a very vampire like theme yes so it's hard to not connect that because like the very start like this guy's like Home is where the heart is. You know what they say. The bartender who's trying to say something profound. Home is where the heart is. And he's like, hmm, I guess you're right. Kind of like the, the dainty husband character. Oh, you got to do the I whole thing, though. I guess that's true. You got to do the whole and thing. And then he's like, and you know what they say about the heart. Yes. It's where the blood is. Yes. Hmm. Interesting. And blood is thicker. And he's like leaning in closer when he's saying this than water. I'm just gonna go. <laughs> just gets up and leaves, and so so it that is a very weird. He has a weird delivery, Noah Segan. Um, I like him. I think yeah. he did a great job, but he has a very weird delivery. It's so flat, um, and just straight to the point. There is no like, there isn't any overacting. I guess is a good way to describe it. It's just well, he just delivers it. He's playing this like hallmark actor that's that's kind of what he's throwing out there like we're getting this hallmark presentation of like for the home when he's coming home and he's like honey i brought this for you it's beautiful come inside everyone's waiting for you kind this of like be, this, this very perfect hallmark for the party. feel good ending yeah yeah i know it's like a jimmy stewart is that the guy's name it's a wonderful life they're they're sending out this very hallmark feel for the ending it's just like a very happy ending and there's just a weird plot twist that they tend to they're somehow satanist cultists and they're sacrificing werewolf pelts for reasons question well, mark and, and even worse we don't we don't know what they're doing really with anything and i i kind of that kind of bugs me oh, with this man. segment 
because you have to watch this one more than once to really appreciate it though and this one's good just because of like when you're watching it, you kind of know like exactly what's going on with the Satan cultist thing. She's like, you never, I'm always the one sacrificing like with them fighting. Like, and if you watch it to the end, you yeah, see yeah. like, Oh, that's why she said that. Yeah. Cause they you know, they sacrifice shit. I just wish we got more of the <laughs> sat- satanic worshipers at the end, right? The sacrifices or whatever. I would have loved to see a little bit more of that. Um, personally, just because I don't know. I think, I think that was a really great twist and I think it was just, kind of cut too short i said, I wish we would have got a little more for it this whole thing was just set up for that action sequence it really and was then the joke at the end and those like, kills were amazing i mean the he the... puts his ring in a shotgun yep and he gets it back <laughs> what the best is noah so that's noah's character right and he shoots frank garcia the other writer <laughs> so mm-hmm. it's i don't know this is great um yeah, the the kills were really fun. The the twist at the end was really good, and I don't know much else to say about that segment other than yeah, it was to me. If I didn't pick one time in the woods, it, I probably would have picked Mister, um, just because it was yeah. that much fun. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. You know, I really, really did enjoy uh, the frame itself. I really like Chad as a character, but uh, you know who really stole the show for me? Uh-oh. Han. Han. <laughs> it was Han. Han and his uh, his fight against uh, the dickweed with the ta- want to taco about Jesus shirt. It's a taco. It says want to taco about Jesus, and then it says let us pray, and there's like a scripture underneath it. <laughs> that guy is very obnoxious, very yes. obnoxious, and he's trying to uh, get in Han's way of being an employee at this rental video store that chad works at and there's joe bob briggs merchandise everywhere like everywhere yeah yeah we get right off the bat we get in chad's car you know right after the cold open in chad's car we get the joe bob briggs air freshener um which by the way that car i love i loved the he when he tells mike myers he tells him he's like hold on a second and the top comes up it's the freddy krueger mobile basically from um Mm -hmm. i can't remember it's uh nightmare on elm street 2 um and it's the same it's that same top uh for the car which i just thought was great i thought that was a lot of fun especially right after that cold open but anyways yes continue there's lots of joe bob no uh material in the the store everywhere Uh, everywhere yeah Chad has a silver bolo that's the outfit actually that's the work uniform Our friend Han's arc is he has to clean like a piranha tank. He has to do all these crazy like things. And his boss, Chad, is getting really proud of him. He's like really happy that his little buddy's just growing. He's kind of like that. He's kind of like the sensei looking for a new best friend character. And Han's just, you know, working really hard. Then he finds this room with a bunch of weird stuff written on it. You know? The break room, yeah. has like like, mommy, daddy. (laughs) And I, it's like little circles. This is where mommy is. Things kind of like that. Not exactly, but it's just got a really creepy killer vibe to it. And he finds this video cassette that says, watch me, like scribbled on it. Mm-hmm. Like you would do if you were five years old. And <clears throat> he watches the video and it's another segment. But the end of it, like apparently chad was setting up a surprise birthday on I, I spoiled the whole whole movie right there he was he was uh preparing a surprise birthday party for han or a surprise you know welcome to the team thanks welcome yeah. to the team yeah 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 welcome to the team like party because han's doing such a great job <clears throat> and it's anyhow funny because because it's such a quick turn right so you've got the yeah. asshole who's trying to ruin han's uh joining of the team and he just he's doing everything in his power because he he keeps applying and obviously keeps getting shut down by chad chad doesn't want him to work there because he's yeah and he he's like your typical i'd say he's one of your like know-it-all friends right and that that's what i think really bugs me with him about everything is he's like he's the one who starts the slime seek the segment he's like oh you've never seen this movie it's a staple of the you know of, of the backbone of all horror or whatever. And he's like trying to force yeah. all these ideas on people. Right. Um, and he like pours soda all over himself and hot and he's like really weird. Yeah. Uh, he just takes yeah, it. He reminds far. us of me. No, yeah, no, he reminds no. us of me and <laughs> you haven't poured soda on me yet. <laughs> well, I'm, 
Just you watch, mister. So, but yeah, he does find the room. Uh, yeah. He goes into the room when he's not supposed to. It's supposed to be a surprise party. How far are you wanting to take this before we switch back to the segments? Or are there any other I segments mean, you want to talk about? I mean, we could go into like how, how this is set up. Like we, like there's that cold open with Mike Myers and we I haven't really talked about that. I definitely want to talk but about that. <laughs> we, we, we will, we will. So the way this, this is kind of structured folks is, uh, there's this cold open that leads into what they call, we call the frame, uh, which is where they kind of put the segments in like the storyline. Like they kind of segment into a guy talking about this movie that's really good, and then they transition into us watching the segment, first segment, and and the frame leads into the end segment where the last frame or the frame itself becomes a segment. So it's it's kind of weird, mm -hmm. but <clears throat> so Curtis, yes. With that being said, do you want to move back to the start? Uh, I definitely think we should head back. Let's let's round it back around. Let's talk about the cold open because I don't want to miss yeah. out on talking about this. I think the cold open is probably the best. I don't know, best open to. I want to yeah. say an anthology I've ever seen, but I, I can't. I had be... a lot of fun with the, this <laughs> open, and I liked it more than some of the. I don't know, man. This might actually be, to me, this is like part of the whole movie. And I don't feel like it's a segment at all. Yeah. I feel like this connects into the frame and the ending so well that I don't know. He Mike won my heart. I honestly Mike like won my heart. Our writer and director Emily Higgins is like this is genius. I I think it's just yeah. an awesome idea in general. I think making a whole meta horror movie where the protagonist is like the setup guy for all the spooky shit that's supposed to happen in horror movies is just yeah. a clean awesome idea in itself. And the fact that she was able to then also build out Mike Myers' character and his friend, the supporting character, the police officer, who can never hit a vital organ, um, was just freaking phenomenal. Like, I, I want this to be – I want Cold Open to be a full hour and a half film. Like, I want to see it develop I, I, bigger, you know? I need to spoil the shit out of this now because this this cold opening connects very well to with what the actual final segment is. Like it is just a meta commentary of being inside a horror movie. Yeah. That's all it is. And in his case, this character is there to set up the actual horror events himself. He is, he does nothing but a small job for the horror movie that he's in. And that is to set up the, the situation with where the victims will die. For instance, like he, he has to change yes. the sign that points you away from the insane asylum he actually right. flips the arrow so that way you'll go to the insane asylum and then eventually that's get one thing right yeah and i love that saying it's like the map says it's this way the sign says it's not so let's go the way the sign says and then the whatever the... i don't want to worry this is supposed to be about having fun and getting drunk and so and, and taking off our clothes <laughs> like i yes. still that that part that quote is great um and i i think it just sums up horror movies, especially 70s and 80s horror, so well yeah. in, in that one tiny little moment that, like, the rest of this whole movie, is just, you know what you're getting into right away from yeah. the beginning, and it's just it's great. Yep. 100. 10, 100. <laughs> 500. 1100 percent. I... No, I, I love it. It's it, bringing... Starting the meta commentary, and then you have, like, the police officer girl who always she never she aims for the head but never hits it always gets the shoulder she's the the cop that shoot tries to kill the killer at the end but they they miss him gosh darn it yeah dr Just by loomis an inch. put six bullets into michael myers and by golly he missed every vital organ in those six <laughs> shots which spawned a franchise <laughs> but this you is that what? exact this is that exact meta horror thing halloween that we're ended about. at a uh, halloween part two for me so I'm going to I'm going to say that. I'm going to say that. So this show had a really <clears throat> strong run. This is episode 49 and uh yeah, that'll be the rest. That's it. That's it. We can't go on any further. We just can't. No. I oh, uh, I'm just kidding. Back to the back to the main story. Here back we go. to the <laughs> It it was so good, dude. I I he's like cutting the power of those girls and like he ends up being the killer. And Which is what like, he wanted, right? Friend arrests him. 
Yeah, no, he wanted to be the hero. He that's what he wanted. He was like, why can't I ever be the guy? And like from the very start of the movie, a movie as part of foreshadowing, I actually messaged you this. So I was like, dude, this has to connect to the end. There's there's no way it doesn't. There's no there's absolutely no way. Like when I was watching this, like this guy just kind of shows up and he's like, I want to be the hero who saves the, them at the end. And like his friends kind of like talking him down. The officer friend, she's like, no, you're always going to be that guy who who's just not worth anything. You're just a piece of shit. You're here to set up the, the deaths and just accept where you are because it's nice. You're never going to amount to anything else. Yeah, and there's no stress, right? That was the other piece <laughs> she was trying to make it seem like her job was so stressful. Um, yeah. You know, but I, I don't know. I All these different little jobs I think are hilarious. Like, I would love that job, getting to set up the satanic-looking, uh, you know, doll in the attic and all that stuff. And oh, then, yeah, yeah. Uh, what was you know how hard Selling it is to revive a signet? <laughs> or how hard it is to possess a doll? Oh my god, that one was good. Drawing oh. on it and then dripping his blood and making the Annabelle doll, basically. Uh, yeah. Selling the haunted house was funny. Um, yeah, yeah, and there's the Ringu girls yeah, in there. Yeah, which is uh, great, because last week... Or is it the like the grudge ghost? Yeah, yeah. I think it's a, it's, it's a combo. You don't really... They don't, they're not really telling you which one it is, but... He's yeah, like, no, let's just... just not turn around. Eyes on me. Let's seal this deal. <laughs> I'm, I'm smiling oh. the entire time talking about this yeah. movie. And I, I just. Dude, this guy's got a fun face, too. He does. He's just like, he's got that dumb, that dumb founded, like, super naive. If they ever what remade. What a nice guy face. <laughs> if they ever remake Jeepers Creepers, I want him to be the guy that, um, what's his face played in the movie? I want him to be the main character, the guy. I think he would be a great version of that character. But anyways. I just want him to say, oh, golly gosh, you know. <laughs> uh-huh. he, he's, no, he's just such an innocent innocent character in this film. I, he did a great job at being this character. Loved him. Adorable. Yes. We'll oh, see him heart. again. We'll see him again. Well, he wound up being the killer. You know, he, he decided to try to, to be a part of the story, which made him the killer. So it's kind of his fault. Yeah, and that whole sequence was just so, uh, once again, it was very comical, and it just kept up in the ante. Like, they know, these these writers and directors of the, of these each different little segments know exactly what they're doing, and they do it really well. Um, yeah, I, I this just, is directed very well. I'm going to say that. Whoever directed this, fantastic job. It was the writer. She did both. Emily Hayes. Yeah, no, she did yeah. wonderful. She did a fantastic job. She The way she directed their emotions. She crushed it. Superb. Yep. No, uh, she she knew exactly how to how to get them to convey what they need to. Um, let's, Brilliant. Let's see. It, so it it frames up really nice. I think the the whole you know oh he's got the cutter because he cut the power. Oh he's got the cutters in his front pocket, and then that ends up being the real linchpin that <laughs> that makes him a part of the the story even more, which I think is funny. Yeah. I even had this really great backstory. Concerned <laughs> Mike. neighbor concerned neighbor his name's that's mike myers by the great. way and then there's there's that kind of yeah yeah that's great <laughs> trying to close the door on him no no no, i'm not crazy i'm not crazy you know what don't you want someone to be here in case if i don't know you heard something and and, and it could be a crazy person well i think you got the crazy person already here <laughs> Like just the... yeah, they shouldn't have let him inside. Well, obviously, that's He's the, the thing one with that horror movies. The power. Why did you let him inside? That's the way horror and movies. And the other work. one leaves yeah. the room. I'm well, gonna go upstairs. I want to know what their initial plan was. Like to call the cops. I think that's what she did. She left the room they to go said, call the no, cops. They they did this on purpose. They're like, yeah, people are stupid in horror movies. So oh, these girls are definitely. stupid too, and they don't know they're in a horror movie because you know for whatever reason you do and for whatever reason you don't understand that they don't understand that because you're stupid in that way for reasons question mark i don't know um but <clears throat> he ends up killing well, them both here's, like, here's the reason one of them you can't you can't let the actors who are going to go through this scary moment they can't know they're in a horror movie but the people who are yeah. moving all the puzzle pieces around they have to know well he tucker and dales them <laughs> Oh my God, he does! You're so right. That's actually he Tucker really and nails great. them, and like, yeah. And if you don't, if you, if folks, if you don't Tucker know what, what I mean by that, but like, they accidentally, these girls accidentally are the reason they're dead. Like, 
they kill themselves. One of them slips. Yeah. yeah, she stabs him in the hand, tries to pull it out, pulls it out, slips, and ends up killing herself, like stabbing herself in the neck. He picks up the shears, and he accidentally stabs the other girl, and it's just a series of unfortunate events for this guy. He ends up getting arrested by his police officer friend, and for reasons, I guess, gets out of jail and leads into the frame where he meets our character, Chad. And had been telling him his screenplay the whole time. <laughs> like, isn't that... That's Which, so yeah, good. it was a screenplay idea. And he's like, you mean you're in a movie and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, yeah. And he's like, yeah, I don't think people will get that. It's even better when you wrap it around right to the end because yeah. he is the frame-up guy who now you understand why Chad is getting framed up by the frame-up guy. Like, that is yeah. his job. That really is his job. He has a small bit. He says this thing. Oh, yeah, that's cool. He's in a movie, in a movie. It's so meta, blah, blah, blah. In all reality, Chad is just a character in a horror movie. <laughs> Who's getting set up by yes. uh, Mike. I didn't think of that until it's, now. That's actually a really good way to look at it. I like that. It's genius. Good, it's man. Genius. No, you, I, don't, I don't know if that was intentional. Maybe it was. Maybe it wasn't. I, if it was, brilliant. No, I mean that's cool. a great that's it. a great point. I don't I don't yeah. know if it was intentional, but now it makes sense. You know, um, yeah, you know, Jer- Jeremy um, King, who played Chad, right? Our Silver Bolo, Joe Bob Briggs, mutant fan loving uh, actor. Yeah. I have to say, like he hands down did an amazing job. He's definitely my favorite yeah. character throughout this entire film. Um, mm. Who who would you pick if you had to pick someone out of any segment, any piece? Who besides Han um, from the I frame? can't say. I can't say Han. You you could, but I just feel like he's he's just from the frame. Um, well, he oh, was no. uh, he that's, was he played himself. Like this yeah. this character played himself. That's actually the actor's name. And when I think they they wrote this this person in specifically to be in this movie in this script, like he was in on it the whole time because his acting is just him talking. It really not is. really showing much yeah. emotions. And then he ends up being like a scientist in the last uh, the last segment. Yeah, so let's like it, that's a just... perfect transition. Let's move into the horror hypothesis um, because I want to hear your opinion on Han's character in that one. Actually, I just want to know your thoughts and feelings. I feel like he got gypped, like he didn't get a lot of screen time. I I think the reason he was put in this film wasn't to be like a, a hero. It was to just create someone who's just. You know, this this actor is kind of adorable in a lot of the way he was portraying himself. Like he was just this guy who was there, who's doing his best, and he's kicking ass and doing a great job. And then he thinks he runs into like some mystery. In a way, he's the villain. He wound... Yeah, yeah. And then like it switches <laughs> over to him. Like, I hope you like birthday cake. And he like hits Chad on the back of the head, you know. And he shows up as a scientist for reasons like to put people like to test if people how well they would do in a horror movie question mark not really sure what the whole purpose of that facility was still yeah so they want to know he... they want to know all yeah. the details and tropes uh it's it's just a meta troperific thing right they want to know all the details right. about how horror movies work it's almost like a world where everything is a horror movie and certain people play different roles in to make all these different horror movies happen and i think I it's it's a whole universe of just horror i don't Cool. I, I like that, but it still doesn't make sense to me, like, what the purpose of this facility is, because it's not explained. Like, you can no, think that really up, not, but yeah. w- when you're watching this, like, I'm thinking, okay, I have no I have no idea what's going on here. Like, there's this, they have an actual, like, Jason chasing, like, they put Jason, not the actual Jason, but kind of like a hodgepodge of Jason slash Freddy slash um relatable uh, not not freddy but it's relatable like killers ultimate, killers yeah. are relatable in some way it's like, like the there's ultimate some slasher killer right yeah yeah and he's like he's he's got like the skins of jocks he's killed because of because of a these poor jocks boy who had picked cancer. on a kid that had yeah. cancer and they end up wound up killing this kid who had cancer it's more and, jason than anything in my opinion like it, i get i get that more sense. relatable than jason like yeah, I'm glad he killed those teen those those uh-huh. guys, but the fact that he's killing everyone now is a bit concerning to me. Um, 
Yes. Oof. Yes. Um, so he's a vengeance killer and he's like chasing this. They put him on a treadmill to chase this blonde lady or whatever. And like, he's one of the scientists like checking these people out and seeing how well they would do in a horror movie for reasons. I don't know, dude. I, by the I way, I think it's just to define all the rules. Cause when they find that room with all the folders and they're like, yeah. okay, if you're within, you know, 10 meters of a killer, your car won't start. And it's like all these yeah. tests they're doing, I think, just define the rules about horror. Um, okay. So that's prob that's what they're trying to tell you without telling you, I guess. And I think that's that's the best we're gonna get. Re regardless of what happens, like this super top secret facility where they these people that were kidnapped for reasons and Hans the bad guy for reasons scientist who found someone to throw into this horror movie for reasons. Uh the killer gets loose, just ends up murdering everyone. By by the way, this this segment or the this one of my favorite shots in this entire movie is the security cam footage where the plot progresses, where the they don't really show the killer getting loose or anything. They just show the security footage with people running away and like running up to elevators as like it's the TVs like switch to different security cameras while the security guards are talking about Game of Thrones like the plot to game of thrones which is dude that conversation was hilarious yeah i wrote that down as a note <laughs> security guards are learning cool. about game of thrones and they're doing a really this, good job of explaining it i this guy is so fucking weird and stupid at the same time on, i love him you've had but i also at the hate office. him at the same time yeah. no and he's like He's like, oh man, uh, so the good kind of incest? No, 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 there was no good kind of incest. And he has to say, he has <laughs> to, to say keep that twice. Repeating yeah. that for the last time. <laughs> I honestly know. I could name people. I won't, but I could name people who are the one teaching about Game of Thrones, right? Because I've watched yeah, yeah, people, yeah. specifically at the company you and I worked at, I've watched people write on a whiteboard explaining how it we all were works there. <laughs> we were there in a meeting doing that with like one of the founders was in the room with us yeah and like at the end of the meeting he's like you guys are wow <laughs> I, I think he was embarrassed that we knew so much about game of thrones <laughs> yeah and if I, I i don't know it was a great meeting uh probably one of the best meetings i've ever had but anyhow, like after the killer gets out, like it se it segues back to these security guards mm -hmm. and like all the things like happening on the the security camera footage. This this scene is fucking hilarious. It the, really one is. of the doctors shows up and she's like, "Guys, what are you doing?" And he like points to the black the whiteboard and he's like, uh, "John Snow." John Snow. <laughs> <laughs> they see like her get pegged by a treadmill, getting thrown across the room that cuts her in half. And he's like, was that a treadmill? And they just like nonchalantly go outside and like put their arms against like the doorway and just kind of like look around going, huh, it's a bunch of chaos out here. Yep, they're absolutely their like, I don't know, their mind's got to be at that point like. What's their job? <laughs> <laughs> well, clearly in this facility, they don't think anything bad's going to happen, right? What kind of a horror trope is that? <laughs> Oh, man, we just saw it in Mermaid Down where the two security guards are watching the cameras and they're talking about bullshit and they literally don't do anything to actually keep anybody in that building safe. We just talked about this movie to like two weeks ago. This is well, the exact trope. Bring his face with a burlap sack because boobs. Oh, yeah, that was a doctor, though. That's a little different, but because boobs, because boobs. All right. Anyways, um, so fast forward a little bit. Right. So now. You know, Chad realizes they're in a horror movie in that segment. And I think my favorite part is when he starts naming off each person's role in it. He gets to, you know, he starts with the girl in the dress. He goes slut and she goes, excuse me. And then, you know, he's moving <laughs> jock. Sorry. He says, I'm sorry. It was the 80s. <laughs> yeah. And then he goes to the black guy and <laughs> he doesn't. So he goes to say it and the black guy goes, don't even say it, man. Like it's he's like I was going to say British. I was I was going to say British. Um, I'm just like, oh, okay, this is, this is actually so true in so many horror movies. Like, um, they're just, 
can you can you be mad at this segment no it's just too good i don't even know what to say man i'm just gushing over here i'm just smiling can't even stop it's just too good anyways so they get out of there and uh you know they're running away they're trying to survive or whatever and he's telling them basically how each one's gonna die oh i bet the sluts banging the jock right now and we get the little bit of the episode where or um the scene where you hear the moaning you think what's happening you think you know what's happening and then she basically ends up just having a cut on her leg and he's just trying to you know tie off the cut or whatever so he takes off his shirt which then leads to chad going yeah you guys had sex didn't you Did I lose you, Clark? I'm here, buddy. Oh, okay. Oof. I was like, if my internet died right now, I'm going to be so pissed. But yeah, so this this segment, there's there's a lot to unpack, though, in the end here. Um, A lot to unpack. They're, they're running around. Um, You know, there's the, like, the weird, funny, uh, what is it? What's it called? The uh, homing device? on like the bracelets that they put on the girl who goes on the treadmill and then the killer also has one um and yeah the little beepers yeah and they're watching they're in the room with all the files this is the room where all the records are kept but there's also a like a big giant display like a tv and a beeping right. and it tells you as they're getting closer so yeah the... uh, well that was so dumb and weird that that thing was there like when i was watching this i was like that would not exist in only, any facility that looks only like in this. a horror movie like, yeah, only in a weird horror movie like well yeah. not a not a horror movie a meta commentary on a horror movie chopping and mall. so like they show this dot this dot and like they're all excited that they that they shot at the door and he's like calling this this girl final girl for reasons and, <clears throat> and he's like i bet you the jock and that girl and slut are banging one out right now mm-hmm. i'm gonna give chad that that weird voice as well because that's basically his character it works he's a naive idiot he's like where'd you get that gun because <laughs> they start getting well, all this you know, stuff out of you, nowhere guys, how'd you get where'd you guys find your flashlights i brought mine I'm like they're all because they're all in a dark room shining their flashlights on things and then he's like ah, where'd you get that gun guy just the stoner character just shows up with a gun randomly you know i i don't know everybody just gets impaled or dies everyone well, he's, he's the impaler so it makes sense yeah uh so our buddy chad gets to meet his hero though through this process of this killer getting loose and that is um, none other than joe you want me to bob say? briggs joe bob briggs i just wanted to let you say that because it was it's like i didn't get to say it the first the time yeah so i'm, I'm really glad yeah, i, I to say to... it this time <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad you did, man. Yeah, makes me happy. Uh, so Joe Bob Briggs shows up for reasons, and uh, he he's like, I know we're in a horror movie. You know we're in a horror movie. And then he points to the camera. They know we're in a horror movie, but they don't know we're in a horror movie. He points to the, uh, the remaining survivors, and he says so a we bunch get, of weird things. We get some fourth wall breaking. Yep. We get, well, That's, Chad says some pretty weird things. Uh, this whole movie is fourth, <laughs> fourth wall breaking. Very true. Um, which is great. But, yeah, Joe Bob Briggs, like the, a bunch of dumb, Chad fucks things up because he's a lovable idiot mm -hmm. um, who runs the video store who's very betrayed that Han put him in a horror movie. So very betrayed. Joe Bob tries to save the day. Unfortunately, yeah, Joe Bob just there for reasons. Unfortunately, Gold Dust ends up putting Joe Bob through a wall. Yeah, well, he's forgotten more about horror than uh, Chad would ever know. <laughs> what a great! It's true. I bet it's true. He's probably forgotten more about horror films than you know I could probably learn in, in my lifetime as well. Like this, probably he's just posted this horror movie thing monster vision yeah. for years yeah anyway, like, so like that that line just reminates with me it's just it's perfect for that scene it's great yeah um i i love when they drop the friday the 13th reference with Corey feldman so that's i know i'm fast forwarding a little bit i don't know if there's more to talk about in the in the elevator and then out of the elevator and chad gets it i guess is the next best thing to talk about chad gets it chad yeah unfortunately we lose our lovable idiot 
Well, he gets a fist punched through him. He puts on Joe Bob's or Briggs hat, hat on ceremoniously. Like there's, there's like four different showdowns, maybe six different showdowns with this, with the killer. Like you, you get the super ripped guy, the jock character doing flips and trying to karate chop him. And the one of the best action scenes, I think that choreograph choreography was fucking great. Or he does like the flips mm -hmm. and the killer just like grabs his arm and like murders him right there. And then, Great. So there, there's a video and, of like I was what I was hoping would happen. There's a video floating around yeah. the internet. It's like a clip uh, from a movie called Never Back Down. And someone uh, during the day that they were filming, someone took a video of, up high in the risers, angled down at it, and it's of this guy doing capoeira, and he does all these flips and stuff. And then when he stands up to actually like start the fight um, with the gentleman he's fighting in the movie, the guy just knocks him yeah. out one punch, right? And yeah. it looks like this underground fighting thing, and people pass it around for a long for a long time, thinking that it was like some real underground fight club. When really, it's just someone who worked on the set took this video of it. But that's what I was hoping was going to happen to the jock when he did all the flips and shit coming in, and when he lands, I was really hoping that the killer was just going to knock his block off. It didn't, Dude. not exactly like that, but it was close. He just got his ass handed to him the yeah. entire time. Yeah. Meanwhile, uh, not actual final girl is uh just like being a total badass well yeah and the best like, is chad's like so final you're, girl. you're the virgin right <laughs> you can't you can't be you have to be a virgin to be final girl like he doesn't understand that he was wrong yeah until after she dies um but she's like i'm not a virgin at all <laughs> <laughs> yep she's, yeah she's she's the slut yeah he got Doesn't it wrong. Matter. Yep. He got Anyhow. It well. So he bowled up. Regardless of who Final up. Girl actually is, like this, <laughs> I want to go back to my original point with okay. like everybody's going in to have like a final bout with the, the yes. Impaler, whose reasons for were whatever. And it goes up through Chad. Like we go to Joe Bob Briggs, we go to uh, the Jock, we have, and then we have Chad who fails. And then we have the two who are left over, which is Stoner and Final, actual Final Girl, right? Yep. And then they face off with him where Stoner has his head all shaved off. And he's like, look, it's me. I beat the cancer. Boy, those jocks are mean. But I made it out alive. It's like really weird. And then there's you like know what it is, though, right? Hilarious. What? You know what this is, right? The scene, he's he's mimicking something. And I no, thought for I sure you would know. Oh, is. my God. I okay. don't want you to tell me what this yep. is. All right. Here we go. So uh, <laughs> the stoner guy and the final girl are sitting outside the, the Chad's Emporium, right? And he's like, man, I really wish we could do something like Corey Feldman. And then they have the conversation. Lost Boys? No. The, that was Corey Haim. No, I think you mean license to drive, right? They have that whole conversation. But then he gets the epiphany. He's like, oh, be like Corey Feldman. So he pulls the Friday the 13th, the final chapter scene where Tommy Jarvis, which is played by Corey Feldman, chops up his hair or whatever, makes himself look like a young Jason, and then basically defeats Jason, defeats the killer. That's the exact scene that you're getting right here with this stoner I kid. I don't remember that. Okay, you're going <laughs> to... I stopped watching... It's number four. Yeah, you stopped at three, I think, right? Yeah. Yep. So this, oh my God, this makes so much more sense though. So, because when he says, don't be a final boy, be a final man and all that, like that's this scene, that's the time, right? But he is straight up yeah. mimicking. You'll have to go look on YouTube for the Friday the 13th well, final chapter, Corey Feldman scene. It's I'll, I'll check that out. But this, this, this whole weird, I beat the cancer montage, like photo montage where it shows like the actor, the actual actor who's playing mm -hmm. the, the slasher kind of dressed up like uh in like overalls kissing this boy with cancer wearing a hat running up for a hug and you could tell on the stoner guy's face because like when i first saw this i thought like this was actually the kid for reasons because that's what this movie would do they'd just pull things out of their ass if they <laughs> wanted to uh <laughs> But I, I thought this was real, and then this this video flashback, and then you see the look on his face, like I don't want to be hugged, like made me laugh out loud. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the stoner kid. And yep. It was just, yep, hilarious. Yes, uh, it was good. It was good. One of I don't know. This movie is like one of my favorite comedies. I, I don't even know if I can call it a horror movie. 
<laughs> so they get to the car though after knocking him out right they get to the car and they can't start the car because of reasons that they've learned in the science facility um so then of course the final girl has to survive so because of reasons the stoner has to go now and move the body away from the car far enough away from the car so they could start the car and sure enough as soon as he does that uh the car starts right up but the killer's body's missing and the stoner's nowhere to be found she flips on the lights from the car and there's the killer right in front of the car holding the stoner boy upside down by his legs and he pulls a terrifier moment and he splits the boy in half <laughs> the stoner kid in half um and i oh man that was you know what else is really nice in this the effects all throughout the film were great uh and i and i i have i have to say like this one was actually pretty nice as well um but yeah what do you like the end of this this segment though dude the, it, my i knew mike was coming back i told you like he, he uh, had this, to he yeah. had to have and this is how the movie was set up mike comes back and he and you know, final girl's like, and he's about to hug her, and she's like, no, I'm good. I don't want to hug you. And then he's like, oh. She's like, who, who, who the hell are you? What are you doing here? And he's like, my job. He pulls out a cigarette. And, no, 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 I don't smoke. Throws it and runs forward looking like a badass, just having a big old smile on his face. Yep. Yeah, what a what a great smile. So Finally, I... look at this man. He got his, his, his wish came true, and I'm like, yeah, I'm my fist up, and I'm like, "Atta boy, Mike." So I, I also liked the continuation of like the Friday the Thirteenth kind of stuff with the dream montage things that she kept having, mm. where he was in the car, and then she woke up again, and then he was next to her, and then she woke up again, and then she yeah. dodged the last time, and the whole Friday the Thirteenth bullshit. <laughs> it was good. No. It was good. It was fun. I I, I hate that shit. I'm glad they did it, but I was just... It's only, yeah, it's only meant as, you know, as comedy. They did it just to have well, fun he, with it. He, he got himself stuck in the car he with did, that. Like, after great. he did it, he's, like, trying to get out with, like, the bar in his way. He's just, and like, then there's child lock. Fucking... It says child lock above the door window yeah. or whatever. He can't fucking open <laughs> the door. Throws, yeah, he throws the cigarette, the look on his face, the pen right onto the, uh, the killer's face, and then blows up, and... They get out and we reach the ending. Thank you, where Mike Myers. Mike and Final Girl survive. Final Girl, who is a very attractive model. Um, yes. Yeah. Dude, I, I wanted to talk. I know we're, we're over, but I wanted to give a shout out to So Much to Do. It was stupid. Okay. It was so stupid that i love it yeah i i so the two segments that we didn't really talk about because um i personally they, they weren't really that good in my opinion um and kind of bring the movie down but thank god they were shorter was girls night out of body and so much to do um all i really wanted to say about so much to do was the moral of the story is everyone hates spoilers <laughs> That's that's all it was. That's like it? there was a com she had a conversation with her friend. They fought about. She was like, "Don't tell me any spoilers," because you know she's like, "I'm gonna get caught up tonight. I'm gonna get caught up tonight." Mm -hmm. She gets possessed by some guy who was killed by some Hasidic Jews for reasons, and like I, I don't understand. None of it makes sense. But I don't think she gets anyone possessed understands. By the guy. <laughs> she gets possessed by the guy. It winds up at the guy's apartment where he's watching this mage battle show that she's trying to get caught up on and she like takes control she decides to fight for control over her actual body with this with this spirit and beats the you know shit just out of to herself. avoid spoilers <laughs> just to avoid spoilers and she she kills this guy she murders his spirit out of her body and turns the TV off. And when she's about to, you know, get caught up, her friend texts her. Texts her uh, he's the twin or something the like that. The twin dies. The twin dies, and then she's, like, so pissed off. And I think at the end of this film, though, Curtis, mm -hmm. she leaves to kill her friend. I think so as well. Because she's getting in her car. The unfortunate part, though, is that those 
the what'd you say? What'd you call them? The what Jews? Hasidic. Yeah, the Hasidic Jews are following her, and I don't know if she's ever gonna make it to her friend's house to kill them or kill her. They, they were. Hope. They were. That was that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is offensive. The way they were dressed up was very much like Hasidic Jews, and it was it was just like very awkward for me. They looked. Like, they looked like the Undertaker these? to me. Um, um, you know, the black hat. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't yes, know. that's that's we exactly what you know, I'm trying to tell you. We don't, it's just the we don't know the type hat. who they are, or whatever, or what they are, and, and I think hair. that is even more annoying with with that segment as well. Is just that there's just too little given of information that all you really come out of this whole segment um, is everybody hates spoilers, and for it to come right after the night he came back again, part four, the final kill, and right before our big finale from Horror Hypothesis, so much to do is just very weak. It's just very weak. Too I, I don't know. I thought it was like it was just the whole the whole purpose was she didn't like fucking spoilers. So you have a weird dumbass Mortal Kombat fight that's prefaced by I think the directors of the film who are like in the introduction to this this show that they're watching. That yeah. was weird. So the writer and director was Baron Vaughn and the show, the Mage show, if you watch, it's like starring Baron Vaughn, uh written it by was him. Baron Vaughn. Yeah, it's all him and it it, it definitely, was weird. Yeah, it was the weirdest one. It was masturbatory. Sure. It so was to, very, you know, touch my ego. To I make sure... Uh, yeah. To make sure I hit on all the segments, the only thing I have to say about Girls' Night Out of Body is no fucking clue what this was about, honestly. No idea. Um, but the I writer think... and director... Wa- the writer was Courtney Andrihar, Andrihar, Hillary Andrihar, and Ben Fee, and then the directors was the girls again. Um and and I genuinely don't know what it was supposed to be about. Uh, so they they get the sucker, they steal the sucker, right? And they lick it, and they get this weird stuff on their faces. And then the other girl, final girl, or the the two, either the girl licks it, the one that didn't lick it licks it, and then they're all monsters. But apparently, someone was stalking them the entire time. They pull this guy who was stalking them inside, and they murder him. And then they have a pillow fight so, with some pretty epic music. Yeah, sure. Uh, the, there's a weird cackling. Where there's there's an old Chinese lady who cackles, but it doesn't look like she's laughing at all. It looks like she's just barely moving her teeth in a weird smile. I don't know. It was weird. Very weird. It wasn't funny. It was stylish, I would say. It, just, it was a very stylish. Everybody looked great. Everybody looked very stylistic. And sure, it was made. Is it is it my favorite? Eh, it was okay. Yeah, it was. I think, but it's a it's a knockout between Girls Night Out of Body and So Much to Do. Which one's my least favorite? But once again, I mean, there is so much to love about this movie that I can still watch it and I can deal with those segments over and over again. I I might actually watch this movie again this week just because of how much freaking fun it is. I um, I do like. We should do a we should do a big watch party. Um, sure. On Discord. Because I have Shutter and we can stream it through Discord with our friends. Sure, I think that would be a lot of fun, and I think everyone would have a lot of fun watching it. Drink some it. some beers, maybe or whatever we're into, hey. and and watch it. Um, I uh, I really liked. Uh, I have so much to do. By the way, I just want to throw that out there. I thought it was a funny, dumb concept. Just I I I like your opinion. I appreciate your opinion, and I don't hold it against you. You know, <laughs> but don't you fine. ever ever spoil something for me. <laughs> you know what? Um, Sixth Sense, by the way, Bruce Willis was dead the entire time. So Clark sent me a picture <laughs> um, of some Jewish men, and I, I Those, can definitely. That's Hasidic. Yep, I understand. It, um, I understand where you're getting that reference from. Now it makes it makes more sense with this picture. Yep. Well, it's a very. Uh, it's not oh, great, dude. Now we, I have to kind of kind of discuss, especially with those. There's a very specific dress code that you kind of have to follow. You you can't shave your beard. It's part of like uh, there's like I'm not exactly sure on the specifics, but generally when you see someone who's, who participates in Hasidic Judaism, they're very strict on their faith and they'll wear like uh, these top hats, kind of, and they'll grow some like special hair ornaments. For reasons and they're always wearing like suits 
So when I picture these guys kind of following them, they, they had like the long hair, they had like the weird, the weird suits and the beards and everything. So it's very, uh, very awkward, very awkward thing to kind of just see like, why are, wait, why, what is this like an actual commentary on religion? What, what are they doing here? So especially with know. the stamping of the, what is that? The Omega symbol on his forehead, right? And making yeah, him that... dig his own grave. And I mean, there's a lot more that happens to that setup. But like I said, I mean, I just felt like the whole the whole moral of that story was everyone hates spoilers. The whole push was that. And they yeah. have these little elements of other things kind of bookending with the, mm. the, the men in black. And I, don't, I just don't really get it. I just I missed that, whatever that was. So I missed it, man. Right. I missed it. It, was, it wasn't bad. It wasn't terrible. It didn't make me want to throw up. It made me happy a little bit. Yeah. You know, the girls' night out one, though, is I just, I didn't understand it. No clue. I, very stylish, very cool. Just not, it was more, it felt like more art than fun, like the rest of this movie was. So it was out of place. Very much so. I agree. Well, I don't have anything else to say unless you do. No. I'm Perfect. Good. Well, what is the next segment for our show? What do we do next usually? I I mean, fun facts and trivia usually, but I think we've gone over a bit too. Yeah. What what have you been up to lately? What have you done? Oh, man. Uh so did I talk about the self uh self-authoring? No. No, I don't think you have self off self authoring. Uh, so, and I, I don't kind of avoid like anything political. Uh, Jordan Peterson is a psychologist, and uh, he he's relatively active in the political world, right? Um, that aside, like he uh, he's a certified psychologist, uh, and he's a professor um, in Canada somewhere. I don't know exactly where he has this. Uh, program called self-authoring and essentially what it does is you author things about yourself uh it's a kind of a court like there's a four-piece coursework that you can kind of buy and I, I i paid for it or my friend kind of bought it, like a two for one and he gave me one as a gift which was very uh kind of him but the whole point of it is to write things down about yourself um, like your past, your things that kind of affected you, and to kind of consolidate everything regarding your past, present, future, in a words to have it out there, have it in writing. And studies have kind of showcased that when you do this, you write these things about yourself, you become more sure about your goals, and you tend to be more, um, uh, how do I say, uh, more tenacious in reaching your goals. Like you'll work harder, harder, you'll put in a little bit more effort. That drive will be there a little bit more. So I'm um, just kind of doing that, you know, self-improvement stuff. I think it's, I think it's worth trying. Yeah. When you messaged me about it initially, um, it sounded like something that I could benefit from, uh, yeah. especially after our talk on your, on your show. I know that episode hasn't come out yet. Um, but but it's definitely something that I think um, most people could probably benefit from in some way, shape, or form. And it sounds yeah, really, you're, you're, really interesting. You're basically journaling. And there's they're like, hey, write this out, write this out, write this out, write this out. And you do it. And in the process of doing it, you come to understand things about yourself potentially that you didn't really understand before now that you've gotten it out of your system as a kind of a way of self-therapy. It's like journaling. Like they're there are tons of benefits like emotionally and cognitively if you just write things out about yourself definitely helps with self-awareness very cool man how about you curtis what are you up to so unfortunately um nothing new actually so i'm still reading the original it novel by stephen king um i'm over a third of the way through the book and holy cow is the book so much more fun than um than either film but while i was also watching or while i was reading it i decided 
let's watch the old 1990 um, made for TV movie, the two part series. And I really do. I feel like they did a really good job in that of kind of bringing what's in the book to TV without, you know, being too, uh, you know, there's a ratings board, right? And you can't do everything that you want to do that's in a book sometimes. So they at least hat tip or homage to bits of the book that you can't do on TV, which I thought was really smart. And also, it's a very long book. Um, I mean, I think I brought this up maybe two months ago, two and a half months ago now that I started reading the book. I took a break um, for a while because I had a newborn and was, was you know, dealing with that. And um, now that I'm back in it, I'm reading it every night, a couple of chapters, uh, as much as I can, basically. But I guess the what the big thing I was trying to say is that I think the It 1990 film does a really good job of staying as true as it can to the book without some of the bits of the book that you can't do on TV. Um, you know, everyone always brings up the... There's a, um, what's, what do they call it? Um, the orgy, the orgy, which I, we still haven't even gotten to it in the book and I'm a third of the way through it. So it's gotta be somewhere near the end, I guess. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so they, they can't go over that, how right? they beat it the first time. Um, and it, it goes over in detail, like the size of specific boys penises. So it's definitely a, a very interesting read. Yeah. Something that you could definitely not show in the theaters, yes. ever, or even on made-for-TV, um, <laughs> especially on made-for-TV. Uh, you can't put that like on you the would, Hallmark you channel. You would be sent to prison if you showcased. Yeah, so that I shit. think I think they did as good as they could, um, staying true to the book without obviously doing the things in the book that they can't do. And um, I bet I don't you know. Stephen King got you know kind of investigated on like pedophilia because of that shit. I don't so, know which book, because there's many books that he's written that have that kind of problem. Dude, I would not be surprised. I would not be surprised. He's He's got some very weird, horrific writing. Yeah. So. Uh, I also genuinely, I like, I like a lot of his books, um, a lot of his writing. I like his style of writing. Um, if I could cut out pieces of the story, sure. I mean, I would love to, but no, yeah. no can do. Um Anyways, yeah, so that's what I've been up to. Um, just kind of reading that every night, getting further and further and further into that story. And then, um, yeah, I decided to throw on the old 1990 film and take a look at how close it is. And, like, so so specifically, there's, like, scenes where they, in the book, it goes into a lot of detail about, like, what the character is doing. And The old 1990 film? Yeah, they don't have a lot of time, the two-part uh, TV movie they don't have a lot of time to do that in the movie, right? They have an hour and a half in part one and an hour and a half part two. Right. And so instead of like, you know, instead of uh, Ben Hanscom going to the bar and sitting with his bartender that he goes to every Friday or whatever, like they describe in the book. And then that night that he gets the call from Mike, he chugs a whole, you know, bottle of whiskey. Instead of doing that, they have him at his condo or his apartment with some really hot date. And he just won an award, you know, for whatever mm-hmm. thing he built. And instead, he ju- he drinks the whiskey there, right? So they cut out, you know, what would be a 15, 20-minute scene probably in, in a movie. They cut it out and they sum it up in a nice, you know, 30-second. He just chugs it there because mm-hmm. he's so shook from the call. So I just think it's really nice that they don't completely cut out the, you know, the drinking of the whiskey. They just change it for okay. TV. I don't know. Well, they, really nice. they're taking artistic privileges too, you know, they, whatever they, they feel will, will look better on the screen. They're mm-hmm. going to do that instead. And it's up to the director and the producer and all of that. So you're never going to get like a very faithful film unless you have J.K. Rowling behind it, behind the scenes saying, no, you're doing this. So I don't yeah. know. I mean, a lot of times you got to cut stuff as well, right? I mean, I'm sure... They filmed a lot of stuff for the movie that they didn't even get to use. I'm sure there's some yeah. cutting room floor. Um, but yeah, anyways, that's what I've been up to. Just kind of getting lost in, in uh, it uh, and having fun with that. But nice. that is all we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, everyone listening on the radio waves. That's all we've got for you this week. Radio waves. And uh, yeah, I, th- I guess we'll plug our socials real quick. Um, Do it. If you want to follow us please do so on twitter and instagram at the number two guys horror pod that is the number two guys 
horror pod. You can also email us directly um, at two guys and some horror at gmail.com. That's completely written out. Two guys and some horror at gmail.com. Shout out uh, to one of our listeners, Sasquatch Prime. He's given us a ton of listener requests. Um, actually, I can I can tell you a few of them. Wes Craven Shocker, William Friedkin's The Guardian, The First Power, and Popcorn. Those are specifically four films um, that he mentioned he wants us to watch, and we will be watching one of those uh, in the near future. I'm not going to tell you which one, um, but I will uh, when we get closer to that. Just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a teaser there. Um, but yeah, thanks for listening. Um, and Clark, you want to close this out with anything wise? Uh. I know it may be hard, but try to wear pants at least, you know, once a day, if you can. Easy. Did she eat the fig? I don't remember. I didn't I think pay she that close of attention to the video. I...